Say you bought yourself the Dell XPS 8940 and it came with this RTX 3060 Ti and you wanted to extract a little bit more performance out of it. Well, you can't overclock the CPU, so why not try overclocking the GPU? The first thing you'll notice is that the power limit is stuck at 100%. You can't, give, you can't go any higher than 100% power limit. So what do you do? The sketchy BIOS flash, that's what you do. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to get a little bit more power limit out of your 3060 Ti. And I'll show you what I did, what didn't work for me, and what to do if you accidentally mess up. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this inside of the system. Right now it has a Cooler Master T2 on a Intel, what is it, an i5-10400. I traded my 10700 with a viewer because really, I'm not gonna use it. Uh, I have a 10850K if I wanna do some Comet Lake overclocking and I can't overclock a 10700 anyway. So I traded him out and he's really happy about that. So it's good to hear. You download MSI Afterburner and the power limit is stuck at 100% max. Now on a 3060 Ti, that's 200 Watts. That's the most this card is gonna pull under pretty much any circumstance. The only reason you would need more power than this is to perhaps boost a little higher and maybe get your overclock, like your manual overclock, slightly higher. Now, overclocking a GPU to like its max, like its maximum point before it starts artifacting or crashing is kind of a fine art and I don't really know what the upper limit for this 3060 Ti is, but I'm gonna give you guys the tools to find the upper limit with your Dell OEM card. So first things first is we're gonna download the NV Flash tool. So go ahead and go to Tech Power Up. I'll have the links in the description and download NV Flash. Now NV Flash comes as a compressed folder. So you're gonna go ahead and extract it, then go into the X64 because that's what this architecture is, and then copy this application. Then go to your OS drive and then create a new folder and name that NV Flash. Then place that application inside of there. Then go ahead and download GPU-Z. I already have it downloaded and installed. It's super simple. So go ahead and open up GPU-Z and extract your factory BIOS. I named the factory BIOS GA104 Dell because it's short and easy to remember. All right, then we find a different BIOS to flash to it. So I just Google 3060 Ti BIOS. Again, I'm gonna have links in the description, but this is what I do. So here's a full list of all of the kind of open downloadable vBIOS is for 3060 Ti's. So obviously the best one is going to be the highest base and boost clock, but all of the base clocks are the same, all the memory clocks are the same, but the highest boost clocks seem to come from the ASUS cards. So why not flash one to your 3060 Ti and see what happens? So I'm gonna download the ASUS one now, because the ASUS card is much bigger, it has a higher power limit, like 300 watts power limit, and I don't think realistically a 3060 Ti could ever even draw that, but because it's so different, I don't think it's gonna work, but I'm gonna show you guys what to do if it doesn't work. Then I'm gonna download the Zotac Twin Edge BIOS because it's a twin fan. It has a much higher likelihood of working, although it only increases your power limit uh, 10%. So I downloaded both, both of these. I'm gonna go ahead and rename them to simpler names. So GA104 ASUS and then GA104 Zotac. It's just easier to remember. Then I'm gonna copy them and paste them in that MB Flash folder that we created before. Go ahead and grab my OEM vBIOS just in case I have to flash back to it. Now it's ready to be flashed. So go to Device Manager. Disable your device, and then open command prompt, but run it as administrator. Then you type cd c semicolon, or I don't know what that, that thing is. It's just that thing. <laughs> Backslash nvflash. 
Then it will mount NV Flash. So now we issue commands directly to that NV Flash application. So then you type NV Flash dash six. Dash six is the command to flash a BIOS. And then we're gonna flash it, or at least we're gonna try flashing it to the GA104 ASUS BIOS. Again, I don't think this is gonna work, but I'm gonna show you guys how to fix it if it doesn't. GA104 ASUS dot wrong. Here goes nothing. So they'll ask you, are you sure you wanna do this? Are you really sure you wanna do this? And then just let it rip. So now it's gonna tell you a reboot is required to take effect. So let's go ahead and restart it and see what happens. Oof. That is not good. And another thing that's not good about this is if your fans aren't specifically compatible with this VBIOS, your fans might not run and that card could get super spicy in there. So we're gonna go ahead and go to device manager and well, it's too late. <laughs> when the drivers apply, they stop working. Case in point, I have a black screen here. So now what we have to do is we have to get the computer to boot into safe mode with command prompt so that we can issue a command to bring it back to the factory BIOS or to a different BIOS altogether. So just, you know, restart your computer a few times. You just want it to get into safe mode. So if you can actually get into Windows, you can always just tell it to restart and hold the shift key, or you can wait until Windows repair comes up and tells you to repair your device because it's not booting into Windows, right? <laughs> All we want is to be able to boot into safe mode with command prompt. So now it's gonna give you the preparing automatic repair. It's good, that's what we want. You can diagnose my PC all you want. I have severely upset it. This looks really bad, and most people would think that they break their card from this, but don't worry about it, we're good. So then go ahead and go to troubleshoot, and advanced options, and then startup settings, restart. So then go ahead and select six. This takes like an awkwardly long time when you're booting into safe mode. <laughs> don't know why. So anyway, we have a command prompt here. It's hard to see. It's really hard to see. But uh, just type the same thing you did before. CD, C, semicolon, backslash, NV flash. It'll mount NV flash, and then you just type NV flash, dash six. And let's just go ahead and load up that Zotac ROM. So GA 104 Zotac.rom brings up our firmware update. Let's hit yes again, yes again. Just throw a different BIOS at it. Reboot's required to take effect. Hit the power button. So now we're gonna be operating off of the Zotac BIOS. So let's see how that works. It's already looking better. So now you just wait until the drivers uh, apply. The screen will flash when it happens. Before when the drivers would apply, it would just give you a black screen. But now, we should have dang Zotac power limits, unless I really messed up the drivers. Maybe re-enable your device first. Sometimes it'll give you a code 18. Just uh, restart your computer. So now you should have your NVIDIA drivers pop up. You don't have to reinstall them. Go ahead and open up GPU-Z, and boom. It shows it as a Zotac PC partner card. Then when you open up MSI Afterburner, you have 110% power limit. Nice. So you could really go down the rabbit hole and just try out a whole bunch of different VBIOSes and see which ones work. This one has worked for me. So if you were gonna do this, I would probably just recommend doing this one and not playing too much with it unless you're really experienced with flashing VBIOSes on your graphics card. Uh, like always, you can, you can brick your graphics card doing that. It's very unlikely, but it's possible. So take it as a precaution. So uh, yeah, let's just, um, I'm just gonna run Fermoc real quick just to show you guys that it does hit 220 watts instead of capping out at 200 like it did before. So it's gonna get hotter and the fan curve might not be right because this graphics card thinks that it is a Zotac card now. So it thinks that it might have a bigger cooler or bigger fans. So the fan RPMs that it will ask for to achieve a certain temperature might not correlate anymore. 
or it'll just spend the, fa the fans faster and faster until they hit a certain temperature mark. So let's just run a quick time spy and see if we can't get a higher score than what we did with the Gigabyte card that we tested a few weeks ago. The same or higher, but I think I ran that with like a 116% power limit. So this shouldn't score higher than that, but shouldn't being a keyword. And there it is, a graphic score of 11,460. And we hit maximum boost clocks about probably 1950. I don't know if the memory clock frequency was any higher, but uh, let's compare it to the Gigabyte card that we tested a few weeks ago. So here's the Gigabyte card, and it scored an 11,241. And that was with a 116% power limit. On an open air tense bench, this is a closed case. I think there is something pretty special about this Dell 3060 Ti. So if you want to try it, I have all the links in the description. Go ahead, feel free to try it with the Zotac BIOS if you're not 100% familiar with how BIOS flashing works on your graphics card. It's really a good primer for it because uh, from what I can tell, it's pretty stable. I ran Furmark for a few hours before making this video. So I don't think this card has any problems with this Zotac BIOS and having 110% power limit. I think Dell did a really good job building this card and the cooler that's on it. Maybe I'll put some liquid metal on it to see if we can't get the score even higher. But for now, try it out. See if it see what works for you guys. Leave a comment on what your results look like. Please don't tell me it's a black screen. I, I would feel bad if I bricked your card. <laughs> so be cautious, get subscribed, and have a great day, guys.